Hi, Ron. Thank you for your time. Uh, Brock McGinn was, you know, arguably your most prominent signing today. Um, just when did he come across your radar? Uh, how did you identify him as someone you wanted to add? And is it just too simple or too uh, basic to maybe just say he's a replacement for Brandon Tanev, or is it more nuanced as far as what Brock McGinn can offer your team? A little, little bit of everything you just said. Um, he plays a real inside game. He's got really good energy. Uh, physical player plays the same way every night. We just really valued the player, but we also valued the intangibles that he brings on a nightly basis and some of the stuff that he's going to bring into our locker room. Taylor Haas. Hey, Ron. Uh, thanks for doing this. What sort of role do you see Dominic Simone filling in the organization? And just what kind of reports did you get on him from maybe people in the organization that were here uh, when he was here before? Yeah, we've got obviously good reports on on Dominic. Um, Sully obviously knows him well. Patrick Alvin knows him well. Um, we just felt like we needed depth added in the organization up front, and we feel Dominic will be a real a real good piece for us moving forward. Uh, whether he's up top or down below, you know, we'll wait and see what what training camp dictates. Uh, we do have some kids, obviously, that are going to be fighting for some spots, and Dom will be in the mix as well. Wes Crosby. Hey, Ron, I think it was uh, a little bit over a week into June when we got the news about uh, Casey needing surgery and his recovery time frame was docked at six to eight weeks. Just how is that coming along? And at this point, would you expect uh, him and, and Tristan to remain the uh, goalie duo in, in Pittsburgh moving into next season? Uh, Casey's back on the ice, um, so he's doing well. We certainly anticipate him uh, um, being at training camp. Uh, those guys did a good job for us last year, and uh, we anticipate them both being back. Rob Rossi. Ron, thanks for doing this. I'm wondering, um, based off the way the day went, did, did it go about as you expected it would around the league in terms of the prices? And um, what areas do you think you still want to improve on with your team this offseason? And do you have enough cap space to be able to do it or – alone or do you have to you anticipate you'd have to make some moves involving players on the roster yeah we we don't have a lot of cap space we went into the free agency not having a lot and remember a, a month ago we were projected to be three three and a half or so over the cap so uh we can be under the cap uh, cap compliant day one as we are right now um we would like to tweak tweak some things and we're going to continue to monitor the free agent market to see what's out there and see if we find um, any fits that are upgrades for us. Um, I was a little surprised at the day today, I mean, with the flat cap and and uh, the poor financial year last year, the way the way things went. We uh, joking with a couple other GMs that we smartened up a year ago and we got back to our, our regular selves today. So. Uh, I, I was surprised with some of the prices. Dave Molinari. Uh, thank you for speaking with us, Ron. Uh, do you anticipate that you would be able to replace Cody CC internally, or do you feel like you're going to have to look for a right-handed defenseman either in free agency or via trade? Well, we, we wanted to re-sign Cody, uh, but you probably saw the numbers and there was – no real way for us at this point to, to make that fit. Um, so, you know, as I always say with any position, if we can do something to improve ourselves um, and fit under the cap, we will certainly look at it at any position, and that's no different with our defense. Mike DeFabo. Hey, Ron, appreciate you making time for us today. Uh, in terms of the goaltender that you added, what do you see in him? Um, how do you envision him factoring into your, your organization this season? And in addition to that, uh, will the goaltender position still be something you look to address this offseason? Well, I, I think I kind of answered that in the, the question before. Anywhere we think that we can upgrade and we can make it work cap-wise, we'll certainly look at it, whatever position it might be. Uh, as far as Philip, we're extremely excited to – to add him to the organization, felt like we, you know, whenever you can get a, a good young goaltender, you're obviously excited. But we've we've got the two young kids, and now we have a couple guys that are 
older when I say that in their early 20s. And then, you know, obviously we got our big guys. So uh, I, I like to, to add to our to our system and we're excited to see him see him play this year. I would anticipate him certainly starting in the minors. Um, but he showed a lot of promise last year and won the national championship. So uh, exciting day for us in terms of uh, signing Philip. Take a couple more. Dan Kingerski. Hi, Ron. Building off of, of your surprise uh, at some of the prices today, uh, I'm curious. I think there were like four or five times more transactions today than, than a year ago. Did the all of the, the the ferocity of the day kind of add a little more pressure to you to get a deal done with McGinn today rather than maybe waiting a, a couple of days? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, we were we were really really busy. I mean, you're you're looking at all kinds of angles because if you don't get player X, you have cap space, and we wanted to be as good as we can without obviously going over. Um, Brock, we're really excited about having him. So he was kind of one of those guys when we looked at the cap space that we had, there's a certain players that you just stroke off your list because there's no chance we're going to, we're going to be able to fit them in. And Brock was certainly at the top of that, the list for us that we could fit in. Uh, we felt like we need another inside player and Brock's an in, inside player that, you know, scores goals around the net and block shots and do all the things that you need to, you need to do to, to win games. So he was certainly high on our list and we're thrilled to, to add him to the organization. Matt Venzel. Ron, what does uh, Nick Pryor bring to the front office and how does his presence change maybe rules for others in the front office, most notably his father? Yeah, it doesn't really change much. Um, Al Santilli is, is going to be moving on, one of our top uh, amateur crossover scouts. So um, we need to find someone and Nick was there. I'm familiar with Nick. Um, he's got a terrific hockey mind. Um, and he, he's going to really add a lot to the organization. You can just look at the history of some of the picks that they've made uh, with his influence, and I've been around him for uh, four or five years working closely with him, and he's, he's going to be a really, really important add to the organization. Hobby Oxenreiter. Hi, thanks, Evan. Thank you, uh, Ron, for the time. Um, although it doesn't involve your team, uh, do you have any perspective or comment or opinion on Mark Andre Fleury in the trade yesterday? I uh, no, I don't have a lot. I think Mark Andre has has been a terrific goalie for a long, long time. I've got the ultimate respect for him, and obviously, pe people around here speak very highly of him. Seth. Ron, you've talked about uh, wanting to maybe add some toughness, particularly to the forward ranks. Uh, do you feel Brock offers anything uh, substantial in that area, or is that still something you might uh, uh, look around, provided uh, you can find something we've, that works with the salary cap? Yeah, we've we've looked around. We tried hard today. We had a guy in a two-way that two-way contract that went somewhere else. So we try. We've tried hard, and we'll continue to to look for that. Taylor. Where are you at right now with negotiations with Aston Reese and uh, Zahorn of the two restricted guys? Uh, Zahorn, I would expect to get done in the next little while. It's not a real difficult one. Just kind of put it off until after uh, free agency here. And I, I anticipate getting something done with Zach in the near future, hopefully as well. He, he's got arbitration rights. So um, hopefully we'll get something done before that. Last question, Mike DeFabo. Ron, speaking of some of these contract negotiations, uh, you had mentioned previously that Malkin, Latang, uh, Russ, those were on the back burner until after some of these busy periods passed. Uh, when, when do you plan to start resuming some of those conversations and where do those stand? Yeah, we'll get to those um, in August here, figure out a plan and we'll get to those. So I would anticipate in the next little while here.